Hello and welcome to O Canada, an irreverent look at Canadian news by Canadians for Canadians. This week we're going to be looking at the issue of face masks. Yeah, it seems that these little fabric face coverings are causing quite the uproar across the country where some Canadians seem to be struggling with the idea of covering up their air holes during the COVID-19 crisis. And as with many things these days, the issue seems to be dividing the nation into two very distinct and very polarised pro-mask and anti-mask camps, each of them as passionate as the other. I mean, passionate for Canada, not like this. I don't wear a mask for the same reason I don't un wear underwear. Things gotta breathe. You cannot mandate, you literally cannot mandate somebody to wear a mask knowing that that mask is killing people. It literally is killing people. Yeah, we get it, Florida. Not even the pandemic can slow you down from giving us both gift-worthy comedy and insanity in equal doses. But anyway, back to Canada, where we're going to explore whether people here should be wearing masks right now and whether the government has a right to tell Canadians when and how to wear them. On one side, there are the anti-maskers, people who don't want to wear masks at all, even citing civil liberties and saying that a government-mandated mask is attacking their freedoms. For example, take this group in Edmonton who took to the streets to protest in what they called a march to unmask. Hey, hey, ho, ho. The masks are right, have got to go. The majority of this group is against rules making masks mandatory in public. No, I do not wear a mask. The use of face masks is currently not mandatory in Edmonton. This group says they hope that continues. I think everybody has the right to choose. They were using such slogans as no fear, no mask, no vaccine, and freedom is not free, which for this one poor kid truly takes on a new meaning as he's lost his entire freedom of movement just to be used as a mobile billboard for this ironic protest site. But hey, at least he's technically wearing a face covering. And don't get me wrong, March to Unmask kinda has a catchy ring to it, but if pop culture has taught us anything over the years is that unmasking usually doesn't work out too well, especially if you're the villain in a Scooby-Doo episode. I mean... Let me remind you, when Batman takes off his mask, we sometimes find out that underneath, he's Ben Affleck. I mean, that's pretty bad. What? Robert Pattinson's Batman now? Well, f Also, more recently, I was personally offended by the shocking unmasking in this episode of The Masked Singer, where everyone was enjoying this rendition of the classic Baby Got Back before the unmasking showed that it was actually being performed by NRA darling and all-around attention whore, Sarah Palin. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. I still kinda liked it. I just pretended that it was Tina Fey doing Palin, not the actual Sarah Palin, and that way I get to enjoy it without feeling like I need to take a shower afterwards. Anyway, let's get back to the story. So, with some anti-maskers determined to enforce their right to choose, they are publicly flouting the rules put in place by their local governments, rules which are designed to stop the spread of COVID-19 in high-risk areas such as public transport, like in the case of this protester who, for argument's sake, we're just going to call the Canadian Andrew Dice Clay. If you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. If you want to get contact trace, get contact trace. But don't if you want to get a vaccine, get a vaccine. But you're not going to tell us to do what we don't want to do. And I get it. I understand Canadian Andrew Dice Clay. I mean, how dare the government try to force you to wear something as cumbersome as a cloth mask just so you and your fellow citizens can be protected against, you know, a disease that has proven to have hospitalized millions and recorded hundreds of thousands of fatalities. I mean, where does it end? Next to be making everyone who drives a car have to wear a weird, uncomfortable fabric restraint. Or make people who ride motorbikes have to wear dumb looking headgear that covers not just the face, but the entire head. <laughs> Imagine if they made construction workers wear crazy plastic hats and neon coloured vests with glow-in-the-dark patches. Man, they would look so dumb. Or what if they start making doctors who treat us for surgery wear, you know, bloody masks? I mean, how will they breathe? What if they pass out during surgery? It's crazy! You see, the thing is, we as a society have already agreed many times that some things shouldn't be a choice and that the government should be allowed to mandate things that are good for public health and safety without all this pushback. So, why not this time? Is wearing a little mask while you stock up on 300 litres of hand sanitizer at Costco really such a hardship? Well, it clearly is for some people who have taken to creating fake mask exemption cards and have been circulating them around Canada. 
What's sad is that whoever made this just used three easily downloadable graphics to try and make this card look legit, clearly not made by a mastermind. In fact, it's very likely that it was made by the same guy who supplied this fake ID to someone who was applying to a job at an Alberta weed dispensary in 2019. I mean, come on, 69 Big Hammer Lane? It's fine, but I personally view it as a missed opportunity to not having used a great pun like having him live on Ass Gardens. As gardens, as guard. So basically it seems that people will do almost anything to get out of wearing a mask, but there might actually be a medical case for not wearing a mask, as Dr. Mike Hansen explains. But here's the issue with these policies. They don't list any specific health conditions that would preclude someone from wearing a mask, probably because there really aren't any. The only medical condition that precludes someone from wearing a mask would be hortitis. <laughs> The term itis is Latin for inflammation. In the term hort, which is fecal material evacuated from the rectum of species Equus cabalis. <sighs> but seriously, there are no medical exemptions from wearing a face mask unless someone has a severe skin condition of their face, like a second or third degree burn. Okay, so what about the people on the other side? The people who are actually advocating for masks? Well. Unsurprisingly, everyone from the WHO to the CDC to your Uncle Rob has an opinion on where we should be wearing masks and who should be wearing them. And it's hard to know who to listen to. On the one hand, we have experts and scientists who people have accused of flip-flopping on the issue. For example, early in the pandemic, masks for the public were not recommended, but now the WHO and the CDC are saying that even people in non-healthcare settings should be wearing a cloth mask. Many are pointing to these inconsistencies as proof that masks are unnecessary. Unlike your Uncle Rob though, when the CDC and the WHO change their opinion, it's because they have new scientific evidence and not just because they joined a new meme group on Facebook. And that's what the pro-mask camp is basing their advocacy on, science. Our understanding of the COVID-19 virus is growing every day. For example, we now know that it's mostly transmitted by respiratory droplets. Precautions like staying home when sick, social distancing, and using glory holes are among the recommendations for Canadians. No, really. That kind of glory hole. Whoever said Canadians weren't sexy? The problem is that the virus can also be transmitted from pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic people, i.e. people who don't look or even feel sick. Everyone who contracts COVID-19 is pre-symptomatic at some point, with some people only getting sick up to 14 days after exposure. 14 days, that's like a whole fortnight. No, not that type of fortnight. Although it is worth noting that all of these characters from Fortnite are at least wearing masks. But no, I meant fortnight in the British sense of the word, being two weeks. Two weeks of not knowing that you are sick, but with every cough, every sneeze, every exhale of breath you take, you're releasing microscopic droplets into the air which carry the virus. Now imagine how many people you came into contact with pre-lockdown in two weeks. That's a lot of people. So for those 14 days, you can potentially be spreading COVID-19 without knowing it. More worrying still, the WHO estimates that up to 80% of people are asymptomatic or have mild cases. So think about it. If COVID-19 had been the virus in The Walking Dead, they would never have even made it past the prison season in order to keep disappointing us week after week. Although killing Carl and keeping Negan, pretty ballsy. So let me think. What's a good way to help prevent seemingly healthy people from unknowingly infecting the rest of the population? I know. What if we could make it somehow so that when they were around us, they couldn't unwittingly spit virus droplets on us? So yeah, masks. But not all masks are created equal. There are three major categories of mask. First, there are the cloth masks, which are widely available everywhere. Then we have medical masks, primarily used in hospitals. And finally, we have the medical respirators or N95s. If it helps, you can think of these mask categories as Johnny Depp movies. Cloth masks are like the Pirates of the Caribbean. They should be enjoyed by everyone and on a large scale. Medical masks, on the other hand, are more like Johnny Depp in The Crimes of Grindelwald. It's for a particular group of nerds with a special knowledge of magic, or what some people call medicine. And the problem is that all you muggles need to step off and stop hoarding all the magic masks from the healthcare workers who need them. Sorry, I got a little bit too deep into that one, but I am a potter pal for life. Anyway, lastly, think of medical respirators as Johnny Depp in The Tourist. 
No one needs to see this movie. It's long, boring, and pointless. Even Johnny Depp has not seen it. It should only be for professionals like movie critics who have to see it, in the same way that only professionals such as doctors and healthcare workers have to wear medical respirators. If you're not a medical professional and you're buying these masks, please stop. Also, if you're thinking about watching The Tourist on Netflix, please, please stop. Now let's explain about how these masks work. Cloth masks and medical masks don't really protect the wearer from the outside world. In fact, it's the opposite. The point of wearing these masks is to protect everyone else from the wearer. So while medical masks offer slightly more protection than the cloth version, they should be reserved for frontline workers who have to see multiple sick patients per day, while you presumably just have to stockpile ingredients to make your next sourdough bread or record another pointless TikTok video. Although cloth masks offer the least protection compared to medical masks and respirators, they are now recommended for general use by the public, particularly when in enclosed spaces or when social distancing is not possible. Recent studies on exhaling have shown that wearing a cloth mask reduces the spread of pathogens from around 12 feet down to just 2.5 inches. But since we're in Canada, let me convert that into metric for you. Half of 12 feet is 6 feet, the recommended social distancing measure. 6 feet is technically 1.83 meters, and if you go by the scale of Johnny Depp's, Johnny Depp is 1.78 meters. So when wearing a cloth mask, you're essentially reducing the spread of germs down from two Johnny Depp's stacked on top of each other, each wearing 5 centimeter lifts, all the way down to one teeny tiny Tom Cruise, who, once having his height converted into the metric system, is a mere 6.4 centimeters or 2.5 inches. And don't worry, the writer for all this Johnny Depp analogy stuff has been fired. Now, I understand that you might not trust us in our Johnny Depp scale, why would you? Maybe as a viewer, you need a more visual representation of how masks work. Fortunately, a clear visual representation is available to you and it's perfect. It provokes a visceral reaction to wanting to protect oneself, uses simple but memorable imagery, and presents the information in a way that even R. Kelly could understand. Or maybe you just want to trust someone close to you, like your Uncle Rob. So, take it away, Uncle Rob. Six feet, mask off. Cough, cough, cough. One foot, mask on. Cough, cough, cough. I can't believe that didn't fail. Six inches, mask on. Cough, cough, cough. Three inches, mask on. Cough, cough, cough. This video clearly and hilariously demonstrates that masks are incredibly effective in blocking droplets coming from the mouth. But some people are saying that the mask goes a lot further than that. Too far, in fact. Let's take a look at the Canadian website CanadianLiberty.com. Here they claim that masks have known potential harms such as reducing oxygen intake and the buildup of bacteria and viruses, which is just not true unless you're touching them too much. However, not all of this website was idiotic drivel. I was particularly fond of their tagline, Canadian Liberty, wake up, grow up, stand up. Because now I am definitely going to rename my penis Canadian Liberty. And every time I think about Johnny Depp, I'm just gonna be thinking, wake up, grow up, stand up. Okay, now they've been fired. The rumor that masks stop oxygen from circulating and carbon dioxide from escaping is being promoted by the same great minds who bring you chemtrails and vaccine conspiracy theories. The only thing I'm surprised that the anti-maskers haven't said yet is that the manufacturing of all of these masks has taken vital material away from making the sails for their boat they're going to use to sail to the edge of the flat earth. Some people on the internet have actually demonstrated that masks in fact do not stop oxygen. And by some people, we mean several doctors. Yes, doctors have taken to social media, demonstrating that their levels of oxygen saturation do not decrease while wearing a mask, or even layers of masks. One British doctor even went so far as to run 22 miles while wearing a mask, all while demonstrating that his oxygen saturation levels never dipped below 98%. Oh yeah, and if you want to complain about wearing masks being too hard and uncomfortable to walk around in, you may want to talk to these guys. Or these guys. But some people say that in order to trust science, they would need to see some sort of an experiment that proved that masks help contain the disease. So, we have two for you. First, let's take a look at three countries. Sweden, Austria, and the Czech Republic. 
all of them in Europe, all of them about the same population size of about 10 million people, and all equally difficult for the average North American high school student to identify on a map. Despite a similar population, similar numbers of different age groups, and a similar climate, all three have vastly different numbers in regards to the pandemic. Sweden is at the top, but for all the wrong reasons. As of this recording, Sweden has just over 80,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases, with just under 6,000 fatalities. Austria has just over 21,000 cases and a little over 700 fatalities, but the Czech Republic on the other hand has just over 17,000 cases with under 400 fatalities. What happened? How could the numbers be so different? These countries serve as an illustration of how the policies of individual governments make all the difference. Sweden famously tried herd immunity, and faster than you can assemble a piece of IKEA furniture, the cases spread all over the place. Austria took a similar approach to Germany with lots of testing, lockdowns, and a model not too different from how things were handled here in Canada. The Czech Republic, or Czechia as it's now known, showed some innovation very early on. While we were coming to terms with the pandemic in North America, by March 19th, wearing masks was made mandatory there. This was only two days after a nationwide curfew was established, and in less time than it takes to recover from a styropram and hangover, there was a strong controlled reaction to the pandemic. Unlike other countries, during the curfew, people were allowed to still frequent parks and visit relatives, as long as other aspects of the curfew were respected. The people of Czechia were told to wear masks, socially distance themselves, but were still allowed to go out within some set guidelines. And in the process, the Czechs presented us with one of the most impressive and memorable models coming out of Europe, which shouldn't surprise us since previous Czech models have included Petra Nemkova and Eva Herzegova. And yeah, I had to look up those photos on the internet, and it's one of the few times I can actually say that I was looking at this type of thing, and it was actually for research. At least that's what I told my girlfriend. Our second experiment comes in the form of two different salons. The first is a salon in Missouri, where two COVID-19 positive stylists served 139 clients over a period of a week, during which both the clients and the stylists were wearing either cloth or surgical masks, and zero clients were infected. Yeah, zero. By comparison, in Kingston, Ontario, there was a COVID outbreak at a nail salon that resulted in 27 cases. This outcome was largely blamed on some clients refusing to wear masks and lack of social distancing. So congratulations, Kingston. Scientifically speaking, you're behind a state in the US that actually has a law on its books that says anyone can castrate a rampaging bull after three days. The worst thing we can say about masks is that, yeah, they're uncomfortable. And hot, and damp, but you know what else is uncomfortable? Death. Or even worse, attending a funeral because you didn't wear a mask and gave COVID to your cousin Barb, who died. And the funeral home has a strict mask wearing policy, and it's a nice day out, so you could have been at the beach, but no, you can wear a mask for 10 bloody minutes while giving Barb a right to Shoppers Drug Mart, and now you have to spend all afternoon at a funeral. In a mask. And as the pee pants analogy and Uncle Rob demonstrated, wearing a mask doesn't protect you. It protects others from you. I wear my mask not to protect myself, but to protect you. So to all those people complaining about their civil liberties being infringed upon and refusing to wear masks, you're actually infringing on everyone else's right to safety. So let me leave you with some sage advice. Wear a mask when out in public. It's really not the big attack against your liberties that some of you are making it out to be. And when you're wearing your mask, treat it like you treat your underwear. Change it every day, or if it gets damp, and flipping it inside out and putting it right back on doesn't count. And when it comes to masks, never go commando, even if you're wearing a kilt. <laughs>